In this video I'll be doing a fairly brief review of PacketStream. PacketStream is a residential proxy network, proxy provider, but the difference is you can buy bandwidth up front or you can generate bandwidth by becoming what they call a packeter. And the way it works is you download a uh, an app, it runs in the background and it allows other people to use your IP address um, as their proxy and in return you get 10 cents per gigabyte so slowly slowly over time this builds up there was a point where I used to leave it on one of my old PCs let it run all the time I didn't put any credit on packet stream for well over a year and that was with them, uh, some SEO and some other usage um, or you can buy bandwidth for one dollar per gig and then you can access prox residential proxies from locations around the world. But I use mostly USA, Canada and UK. So um, on, on the main page, just tell you a bit about how it works and so on. Content verification, price comparison and so on. I use it with, uh, with my various uh, browser profiles. I use it with SEO tools. Um, all sorts of applications. Wherever you can use a proxy, you can use packet stream. Some of this stuff I may need to blur, but so this is the main dashboard. So how much you used in the last 14 days, how much you've sold, your available fund, and so on. Uh, so download is where you download the actual app. It's just for Windows at the moment. This page I'll need to blur. But basically this is your proxy access so you can have HTTPS proxy, HTTP proxy or SOX, pro SOX 5 proxy you can use a random country USA, Canada, UK and all these countries here you can have randomized IP or sticky IP and you can have DNS, sorry, <coughs> DNS host name or IP host name okay so I'm just pick USA So let me blur some of this, but then you get your the proxy IP, the proxy port. The port is always 31111, your username and your long password. And inside that password it contains a country and also the states, I believe it's sticky or whatever. And you give some other examples as well, but I won't go too far down. Because I'll have to blur everything. So you can use that inside your SEO apps or your browser profiles or whatever. Uh, and normally I do it in this for my IP hostname. So it's IP hostname, colon, port, colon, username, colon, password, and password, the long password. Okay, so, yeah, so what I, what I found is that, of course, it depends on, on, the, uh, on the host PC, if it's a good connection and so on. It's normally pretty reliable. Um, depending on what I'm doing, I use randomized IP or sticky IP. Uh, most of it is for SEO stuff or browser profiles and it's been fairly good. I've used it to create quite a few Gmail accounts and um, just do various tasks and it's been pretty reliable and the service is a lot cheaper than some of the other big providers and if you've got a spare PC and you've got a decent connection you can actually not pay any money by just generating um, credit to use. That's also a bonus. So yeah, there's a link to this down below. Highly recommend it. And I'll see you in the next one.